Look at these stuff, man. As confident as a good Christian holding four aces. Okay, we're rolling. We'll grab <laughs> Okay, let's start. Let's roll. Hi. Hi. I'm Theo. I mean, I'm Bob. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Welcome to the climate show. I'm Theo. Bob. Uh, I'm Bob. This is Bob. Who are you? Bob. Gov. Gov. Hi, Gov. Paul. Paul. Hi, Paul. Hey, Bob. Hey, everybody. And hi out there in TV land, everybody. We're waving at you through the set right now. Even though you think like the screen is one dimensional, it's really two. We, we see you out there. Don't do that. Just kidding. Um, so we're here to talk about climate change and um, many things. And so um, I don't know if you've heard about this issue called climate change, but apparently the world is getting warmer because we're burning too much gasoline, fossil fuel. So we're here to talk about what we can do to change that and save the planet. So let's talk Which about planet? It. Um, <laughs> well, Mother Earth. This one, we're the one we're on. I mean, Mars is nice, but we'll save that after we save Earth. Okay. Okay. Let's start saving. What are we doing first? <laughs> first things first. Um, Let's put it in the bank. Well, first things first, we have to get our society to realize there's a problem. And a lot of people in our society don't think there's a problem. They want to, like, burn more gas. Like, the oil company people, they're just like, burn, burn, burn. More fuel, the better. Profit margin. I just made $400 billion last quarter, and I don't want to stop. That could be a solution, though, you know? Burn it all up until there's nothing left. Um, that's not a good idea. Uh, survey says, no. Um, only because by then we will change the chemical balance of the sky and the sky will no longer work. Uh -huh. So we can't actually get to the end of this row and th or we'll be like ruined the planet. It'll be really hot all the time. Uh. Like Mars. Mm. I'm really hot all the time. <laughs> you are. Well, Bob, I know. You'll be well, even so I know. So Bob. Yeah. Climate change is, uh... You like me? I do. Very pretty eyes? Beautiful. Yeah, thanks. So <laughs> So clear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, how are we going to save the planet? I like mean, it's up to you guys, too. It's Don't look at me. First thing we can Bob, do... Bob, what should we do to save the planet? Um, I think we should just set a really good example for everybody out there. All little boys and all little girls should just start dancing a lot, like me, going up and down, yeah. dancing. 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 Yeah. Dancing will save the planet. Dancing, I think, will save the planet. Because if you're dancing, then you're not fighting, and you're not doing anything bad, and you're not driving a car, and you're not stealing, and you're not killing anybody. You're just dancing. Dancing, dancing. Contra dancing is really yeah. good. It's hard, hard for me to do that kind of <laughs> dancing. I'm not really good at following directions. <laughs> It, it's complicated. Um, so, does it distract you when I bob? <laughs> bob? I thought your name was Bob. Yeah. Do I distract oh, you? Oh, you bob. Am I distracted I got you. Show? No, no, it's fine. I mean, it's not like we're talking about anything anyway. So, so about let's it. talk. I heard they were going <laughs> to send, send a spaceship and start mining um, <laughs> plutonium from asteroids. Did you hear that? I did hear that. <laughs> I mean, I just think like That's these are crazy. like serious people. These are like the people who yeah, own man, Google. Yeah, man, it's the guy who like, owns Google. He's like, let's go mine an asteroid. I'm like, people said I had googly eyes. <laughs> <laughs> people said my ideas were crazy, and they, this guy is like professional guy. He's like owns Google, and he's gonna go mine asteroids. Yeah, and he's doing it with the guy from the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's awesome. And it's like the and Titanic Kenny. sank. Why are you gonna make a spaceship called the Titanic? It's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> At least it'll sink deeper into space and miss the asteroids. <laughs> Keep going and going. Never come back. That would be a particularly inauspicious name for a star <laughs> starship. <laughs> the Starship Titanic. <laughs> We're off into the galaxy. Oh. It was just a hundred year anniversary of the Titanic last week. Yeah. Yeah, my great 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 grand puppet was on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that that old woman in the Titanic, who, who played the... 
You want me to just, play? That was the movie. That's not the real Titanic. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's really just a movie. <laughs> Wait, you're gonna love this, Bob. The woman, the old woman on Titanic, apparently was a, a great advocate for masturbation. Why for women. are you such a dirty <laughs> old man? You're always talking about that kind of I'm thing. I'm just saying it's like kind of fascinating. I, I think it's like I, I, masturbation. I think is healthy and holy, and we should like encourage it in the youth, as to, so that people don't like procreate unnecessarily. They just you get the rocks are off without so making. Full of yourself. Seven that billion you people. Like have yourself as seven. Your sex partner. Seven. It's pathetic. <laughs> Seven billion. There's no with, need to uh, reproduce. Need to that kind of unless you just <laughs> want to for fun. And you, yeah. and a good I go out with Big Bird. Yeah. <laughs> Big I go out with Elmo's sister. She's so hot. You wouldn't even believe True. it. Yeah. You're, you're is there, <laughs> hey, Bob, is there an overpopulation problem among puppets? No, there's not enough of us. We need more puppets. It's That's true. why yeah, there I should totally, be more puppets. Yeah, I totally get don't around, believe Bob. in you need to get more around puppets, more. less more humans, puppets. more bears, more seagulls. I saw a bear today running across the road. Was it Fozzie? I haven't seen him for such a long time. Fozzie? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm not sure it was. He, he had a big label that said Kermit. You know, it's Kermit's cousin, the frog. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was the climate show. Oh, yeah. We're talking about the climate. Yeah, climate change. Did you know we're actually in a sort of ser semi-serious planetary emergency <coughs> where the sky is being broken by f oil companies that are want to just endlessly pollute the sky with their carbon? And I've heard you say that. The sky is broken. Can you explain what you mean? What I mean is you think this, the sky, you just sort of depend on it to be up there, this like thin film of weird gases, but it's very small. I thought you said this guy is broken. <laughs> I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's not broken. But, um... What was I talking about? Oh, the sky. Yeah, it's possible to Which break guy? the sky. Which guy? So, <laughs> the sky is like we, we're in the Holocene period. Uh, the last ten thousand years have been very like s climactically stable, a group period of evolution where we, our whole human civilization, developed based on um, <laughs> blah blah blah. So anyway, we're moving into a new period, which Bill McKibben talks about here on the book Earth, which let me is. See if I, let me try that book. <laughs> This, is, this book is in bad taste. <laughs> okay, how about this one? J Dr. James Hansen has a new book. Try this one. I'm trying. Mm, this is more tasteful. Yeah, it is tasteful. He's, he's a great writer. I mean, they're both great. But, um... Go back to the first one you were talking about. Dr. James Hansen. No, you're talking about Earth. Earth. <laughs> Earth. A new Earth. Like, it's so different now. We're right in the middle of climate change now. It's not something that's going to happen in the future. It's like this spring. It was this weirdest spring ever. Everyone saw that you were in uh, South, South Carolina. Carolina yeah. You tell us that the, apparently the Vermont spring was Vermont's winter was like non-winter, but yeah, yeah, South we, Carolina. We didn't, we didn't have a winter either. It was it's supposed to be you know 45 degrees in, during the day, pretty cold and even colder at night. But it was 70 most days midwinter. We Sounds could, great. We could grow arugula all winter. Oh. I mean, it, it's great for one year, but who knows where it goes, you know? I know. It's hard to argue with this beautiful weather. It's like, oh, great. But, you know, the problem is, like, in 50 years, it might be, like, terrible, like, Sahara deserts. But, right. Um, yeah. Like, my fur is way too hot for this new climate. <laughs> but I mean, the other thing about shed. it is, is, you know, it's, it's only great to a certain extent. A whole bunch of, um, bunch of different trees started blooming early this year because they thought it was the end of the cold and they bloomed and then it got too cold at night it went down to like 17 18 degrees one night and a whole bunch of i think it was pomegranates <gasps> that had bloomed no pomegranates oh. well How nice pomegranates. Palm. My, yeah. i love that juice palm. It, oh, south it's carolina palm, yeah, really isn't the, the yeah i read I to read your palm yeah it's it's peach territory it's also pecans i love peaches. How, did, how did the peaches make pecans, it through the weird the winter pomegranates you know i don't know about the peaches hmm. they yeah, oh, the peaches are fine. They're, they're fine. they're fine. They're fine. Peaches fine. are fine. Cause, yeah, because the can is like indestructible. You can have the, the oh, climate yeah, can get really hot, and the can will be fine. True. <laughs> It'll last years. Those, those cans of peaches. Yeah, 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 yeah. The peaches are fine, but the pomegranates are screwed. Because <laughs> they're fresh. Uh, ah, yeah. 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 And the pecans? Those are in pies. They're okay too. Oh yeah. Pecan pie. You can freeze those. No pecan. I mean pecan. <laughs> pecan pie. Peking. Peking duck. That's good too. No peking duck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Back to the climate. Anyway, show. like we were saying, 
The climate is changing. We're in the middle of a planetary emergency. We keep getting off track, but we're actually sort of circling the thing here. It's like a spiral. Yeah, so, sir. <laughs> Dr. Sir. James Hansen wrote a book. Oh, very oh yeah, you see from that band, Hansen? <laughs> I, love, I love those guys. <laughs> the boy band? Yeah. He was, he's, he's one of the, he, he's the smart one. <laughs> wrote a book. Do you say that's by Charles Manson? Uh, James Hansen. <laughs> James Hansen. James Hansen. James Hansen. He's, he, remember he's one of the boy bands. He's, he is, uh, really must be the smart one because he wrote an incredibly good book. And he's also a NASA scientist. And speaking of NASA, um, the NASA released figures that this March was the warmest March on record. The first quarter of 2012 was the warmest year on record, quarter, first quarter on record. And we are um, trending. It's true that climactic cycles change, and we do go from uh, different parts of. Let me just stroke your head. Is this what's going on? Okay. So, what I mean to say is, like, it's getting warmer, you know, and the science is in, and um, we just saw the weirdest spring all over the country, and I just think we need to make a revolution to go save the planet, and we encourage you guys to all get on board, because um, in uh, 50 years, we might be really bummed out if we, like, totally wrecked this planet because we didn't have the bravery to confront the climate uh, crisis and the oil companies that have stolen our government. Yeah, I have a sister puppet in Brooklyn, and I heard Brooklyn is going to be underwater. Brooklyn is so beautiful. It's the hippest place in the world. Yeah, you know it's the song? Underwater. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, take me song. in. Let's sing that song right now. Yeah, okay. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn take, take me in. I don't want to go underwater and swim. Ah, yeah, yeah, good one, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one. <laughs> Yay! We're going to work on that. Time to show singers. Yay! Yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. It's better than singing than that to save the planet. We'll, we'll try again on that song in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the second set. Um, so, uh, maybe now is a good time to meet our guest to my right, which is Gov Levis. Gov. Yay! Gov. How old are you, Gov? Seven. Seven. And you are, you, what's your job? Um, You're like a doctor? No. Oh, okay. You're a student? Yeah. You work at a ketchup factory? <laughs> you work in a bakery? Making tile, kind of, tiling yeah, floors? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for coming to the climate show. Um, so, representing future generations, I mean, um, do you like, like it here on Earth? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could live in space, but I like it here on Earth a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, space, like, looks cool from the outside, but I think there would not be enough air to make it really fun. Yeah. be fun for, like, Thirty seconds until you start to choke. So I'm Earth is great. Man. So we're trying to save it because this Earth is yours Bob too. Could probably live there. Yeah. yeah. Show us your Lego watch. Show the camera. Can we get a close up on this? Probably mm, not. That is the anyway. coolest watch <laughs> I've ever Lego seen. Watch. If humans are smart enough to make Legos, we are smart enough to save the planet. If we can build it up. All we need is we to build, build and build and build and build till we build the f instead of having those factories built out of bricks, which are ki which come from oil. Let's build them out of Legos. What a good idea! Wait, Wait. Legos come from oil too. Yeah, the plastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have to boycott Legos. No, no. Just wait. We no, have to make Legos just out of hemp. Play with Legos and don't don't, or, don't be a boy and don't be a cut and just play with Legos. Are Legos really made out of oil? Yeah, they're plastic, man. They're plastic. Bummer. Yeah, bummer, but oh, they're I made of Wait, wait. Are you saying they fry the Legos? In oil? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes. I love fried Legos. That's what fried I Legos. Really <laughs> well, there's, there's a, uh, there's butter, a temporary building mm -hmm. solution, which is the, uh, the earth ships, the packed tires. Oh, that's cool. Because, um, you know, old used tires are a huge problem these days, or they have been for a while now. They accumulate water whenever it rains, and it's really hard to get the water out of them. And, and mosquitoes, and make, they lay eggs in them, and then I eat those mosquito yeah. eggs, and they're not that delicious. <laughs> no, they aren't very good, and they bite all of us. You know? They don't bite me. You can't get through my fur. Oh, yeah. That's, you're lucky. That's an advantage you're of lucky, fur. Bob. But for the rest of us, we'd prefer not to have those mosquitoes. And you can actually turn these huge tires into bricks, basically, mm. by, by shoveling sand in them. 
and compacting the sand with a sledgehammer. And so it can empower oh. people wow. to build their own homes with, uh, you know, reusable materials or with what would otherwise be refuse. That's great. Yeah, yeah but then your uh, your house is going to look, not look like anyone else's, and you're going to be the <laughs> only one on the block with a black rubber house, and you're going to be, like, feeling embarrassed that you're not like your neighbors, and then everyone will hate you. Well, lucky, yeah, that's that's true for for the the cheap way to build, Bob. But you could also plaster the outside of the house and and make it look like a simple stucco house if you wanted to look like your neighbors. I saw the show it's called Sopranos, and their houses are really nice, and that's why I want my house to look like the Sopranos. <laughs> house. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not I'm not sure that would be the best system for you, Bob. Then there there are other options, though. Yeah, Home Depot. I love Home Depot. <laughs> yeah. What is not to love? Okay, except for the, the hype, show. except for the really high prices. I just don't like the way it smells in there. You walk in, there's this wave of like plastic. Every time I go in like a big box store, I'm like assaulted by like the off-gassing of like Home Depot is the big a box coming store. Coming my nose. Do you guys know about bisphenol A? Modern mm -hmm. humans should be aware of there's this chemical. It's a hormone mimicker, and you take it in. It's like on the thin plastic lining of cans. But it is close enough to one of our own uh, hormones so that it's a biomimicker. Yeah. And I heard that anything that's a recycling thing that has a seven on it, that has that chemical in it. Really? And Number it seven. is um, Number something seven. in your body that's like estrogen that makes your children be hermaphrodites. <laughs> <laughs> the theme of today is seven. Number seven. So yeah. you're saying uh, if you... On your recycling, if you see a number seven, it's got bisphenol A. Well, that's what I heard. Okay, we read it on the internet. This may or not be true. We're, later on, we're gonna like, we're gonna research this online, and underneath, we're gonna say true or not true. Ready? Yes. If you have things that say seven on them, it makes your children <laughs> hermaphrodites. Yes, you may or may or not be able to blame them if they're <laughs> not the gender you want. I mean, that's probably what's happening to a lot of people, you know, like... This that's whole, why like, there's so many more hermaphrodites this right. year than there were before. Gay, lesbian, transsexual, bisexual, transgender, questioning, well, all these beautiful options. Cool. No, I mean, I love it. If people should be whoever they want, phone whoever you want. But the why problem is, like, we're, like, we're, people are getting more, like, hermaphrodited because they're, like, they eat their bisphenol A. Next thing you know, they're, like, a little bit more... Like, you know, you drink a lot of milk, suddenly you're drinking, like, all the estrogen that they feed them tall. on the cows, and next thing you know, like, your boy's so growing tall. boobs. There's well, this thing soy, about, like... Soybeans do soybeans, the same thing. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they don't yeah. have estrogen themselves, but they induce your body to produce more, so... That's right. They, they talk about um, you know what young I heard? kids who get a lot of soy uh, through government feeding programs end up... You know like that cereal called Kashi? Estrogen problems, like, <laughs> yeah. young boys growing breasts. <laughs> yeah. Kashi, Rest on boys. What are we talking about? It's the end of the world. I'm telling you. Why, well, why do boys have nipples anyway? I don't have nipples. I think uh, because we're all X Y, and then we get the X. X Y. Why are we X? <laughs> X. You were X. Well, you started as X X, and you get the. X. See, I don't have nipples. <laughs> why do you need nipples? I thought you had nipples. No nipples. Wait, this was a big part of the last show in the puppet milk. W were you telling us you don't? No, no nipples. <laughs> See? Wow. I guess you don't. <laughs> no nipples. So he how was do you totally. Make the puppet how milk? do you make puppet milk then? I am more evolved than you humans. <laughs> you see? To the armpit? Yeah. <laughs> Boy puppets don't have nipples. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you just dropped your hands. I'm milking him. <laughs> yeah. Is this okay? Do you mind if I milk you? I, mean, I, want, I, want, it, I want it to be consensual. <laughs> Feels kind of good. Feels good. Puppet milk. Thanks. Yum. Climate show, mm -hmm. climate show. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, we are here to talk about the most serious topics in the world, like the destruction of our planet because of climate change. And don't let the talk about puppet milk. No such thing as puppet milk. No nipples, remember? Okay, we've had enough fun. Let's talk about something serious. Tim to Christopher is still in jail. I love that guy. He's the best. Tim to Christopher. Do you guys know who Tim to Christopher is? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 He's the one who punked, wow. he, he did, made a joke. He went into this auction where they're selling off oil and gas auctions in some of the most holy land on the world near Moab, Utah. And he, like, took bitter 70 paddle and he went in there and he bid on all these parcels and he ruined the auction and then they didn't sell them. And now he's in jail for two years. Yeah, and then there's a great video which you can see online on YouTube. 
is my friend Alexander Ebert. Oh yeah, we love that guy. Yeah, and he made a video on YouTube. Yeah, for Let's Win. For Let's Win, it's a great song, and it's got the Kim to Christopher court and a parade with Indians and beautiful girls and puppets and YouTubes. Cheap. If we get invaded, what did the bird say when it flew over Walmart? Cheap, 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 cheap. Hey Bob, why don't we have to worry? If if China invades us, why don't we have to worry? Um, because. They don't want to invade us because <laughs> they own us, and so they would lose all their money <laughs> if they blew us up. That's, that is true. But um, isn't the, the, the Chinese <laughs> army, like, wouldn't all their... S <laughs> How does this joke go? The Chinese army, there's all this <laughs> in China. What did you say? What? <laughs> Potty mouth! Potty you mouth! Swearing in front of the impressionable... Yeah, you know what? The, you know where the Chinese... You know um, they get their, their uh, bullets for Where? the Chinese army at the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> they got all those Nerf gun bullets. <laughs> yeah, they shoot rubber bands, <laughs> band-aids, cheap pens, it all right. <laughs> so I guess we don't have to be afraid of China after all. But what yeah. if their carbon emissions are like stronger than ours? Like I heard China's like taking over America in carbon. They're like make more carbon than us. More carbon. They like love to burn coal. Well, Doesn't I know something about Chinese carbon. I bought some pencils at the dollar store. <laughs> they knew <you> right. <laughs> Cheap Chinese carbon. <laughs> the Chinese. Okay. Climate show. This is the climate show. Is the climate the show. This climate is, this show. Is the, this is the climate show. I know what you're asking yourself. It's just like, why are these people on television? And it's because it's cable access and, and it's free. And we're just doing it. Yeah. A climate show. So speaking of climate, my friend uh, here has a, wants to illustrate uh, what the climate change issue is all about. And so he's going to climb. <laughs> We're going to climb the steps to get to the top. Climb the world. Climb get to climb the top okay. of the steps. Climb it. Climb it. Climb it. Climb it. Climb it. all rise then we'll all have to be up at that elevation so that we're not in the water yeah we don't want to oh, be yeah. I'm i mean be flooded yeah you're toast I yeah am. i'm on an island you're a soggy bottom oh, boy man. ocean island you're probably gonna be underwater first you're oh, probably yeah. like at the front lines of the climate issue. i'm i'm definitely I'm one of those islands in near south carolina yeah galveston there's a little breakwater galveston between, is but texas still, the highest charleston, point on the island you're between is only charleston and savannah Charleston, not Galveston. <laughs> Charleston. The highest point on the island is probably only 10 feet above mean sea tide, sea level. Yeah, I don't like even know. So basically, feet. that's going to be underwater, like 50 years. So apparently, like, the Earth is always, uh, we're looking at a 20-foot sea rise. Oh, well, if, you, if you lose the ice caps on the top of the world. Um, when... Uh, the parts per million carbon have been 1,000. There have never been ice caps at the top of the world. We are now at uh, 380, what is that 392 mean? parts per million carbon. What are you talking about? What are these numbers Parts mean? per million is like a uh, kind of technical term, meaning like how much carbon dioxide we have put into the sky. Yeah, I understand parts per million. I know that. <laughs> Not parts per million. Parts per million. Parts I per understand million. that, yeah. But the thing I don't understand is... When there, you say when there was a thousand, there wasn't ice caps, there was what? What? Okay. <laughs> because we have a fossil record, we can look back in time and tell what the the, the, you got the fossil record? I really wanted to get that record, but the fossil <laughs> stuff they only had it on tapes and CDs and I couldn't get the fossil record. Sure. <laughs> we have to go to a record store. So the fossil record shows that when any time that the sky has been made up of an atmosphere that has a thousand parts per million carbon. It is much warmer because of the greenhouse effect. How many times does that happen? So that there was a thousand parts per million. It has it happened. Um, I, I'm not sure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did it ever happen? Yes. Yeah? It sounds to me like you're just saying something you read in that book of the handsome boys. <laughs> yes. You don't really know. Doc, the the handsome hand hand boys <laughs> are so smart, and you should read their book. Yeah? Because it, you not, didn't read they're just not all read it. not rock You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gubby, it's up to you for you to read that one. <laughs> okay, so what Get you're saying, every time there's a thousand parts per million, <laughs> then what happens? There's no snow? There's no, the ice caps melt. Ice caps. 
the like Antarctica, Arctic. The, there's like a top of the world. It's got Antarctica, like Antarctica, Arctic. There's like a picture of the world. It's got like the oh, white Antarctica, on the top, Arctic. just like you, white on top, <laughs> like the Earth. Arctic, so Wait a minute. Arctic, are you saying like the ice cubes in the refrigerator? You're supposed to put a cap on top of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ice caps. Good one. Ice caps, huh? <laughs> yeah. And it's so hot, you're going to want to put ice in your cap. <laughs> it's getting hot in oh, here. No. But really, what what are you talking about? <laughs> you don't know anything about climate change. You don't know anything about females. Well, <laughs> I know how many parts per million are. You know how many parts Bars per million? Parts per million. A female? Do you know how many parts? What's that, Bob? Do you know what <laughs> happens every time a million parts no. happen? What? What happens? A giant stink! <laughs> <laughs> good one! Good one! <laughs> it's true. Like, you drive here in your car, it's one tiny part. But if you add them all together, it's a giant stink. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody's yeah. cars yeah. are one huge stinky thing. And everybody drives all the time. And it's not that big, the sky. And it's filling up with stink. Okay. Climate show! Climate show! So, oh, here's something we could talk about. A Spanish Inquisition. What? <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to organize a Spanish Inquisition? No, that was bad. That, was, that, bad? that was bad. That was pretty bad. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, what we'll have our own Spanish Inquisition, and this time it'll be fun. What? Oh, um, I have a question exactly. <laughs> what is a Spanish Inquisition? No one expects Who is this freak? <laughs> <laughs> no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, it's, 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 mostly, it's mostly a joke from a Monty Python skit, which was very funny, where they said, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition, and that was like, they would be somebody doing a skit, and then someone would say, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition, and then the Spanish Inquisition people would run in and harass them and stuff. Um, but what is what the Spanish Inquisition? Yeah, well, said it was a good idea. <laughs> during, <laughs> during Freak! There was a time that was really awesome when the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians all lived together in Spain for like, 700 years, and it was like called Andalusia. It was this beautiful time of peace between the, the religions, age. mostly because the Muslims were cool and let the Jews and Christians live there. And then the Pope was a real jerk and like invaded and didn't spend so Jews and kicked everybody out and screwed it all up. So, the point is, the, the religions can live together as long as the, the people in charge don't be too douchey about it. And we should look what? to. Um, <laughs> in popular though, that means sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, what was I? Oh, the Spanish Inquisition. So, what we need to do, there are judges in Spain who are doing this cool thing called universal jurisdiction, where they say if people, if people cannot be prosecuted in their con own country because they're doing the crimes and they own the government, blah, 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 that they will sue them in, s in Spanish court. And that's why it's so Pinochet huge jerk from Chile ends up being taken to court in Spain eventually. So, what we need to do is a Spanish Inquisition on the CEOs of ExxonMobil. I think you're mixing up your terminology here. <laughs> That's not called Inquisition. That's called overstepping the judicial boundaries of international law <laughs> and we don't want anything that's called inquisition anyway so <laughs> why don't you just talk about the climate show <laughs> i know but th then it would be funny because we could say no one expects the spanish inquisition like say the ceo of exxon mobile he goes to barcelona he's expecting just to go there and stuff his fat face with caviar from endangered species and next thing you know the Spanish judges arrest him and say, hey, in favor of future generations, we're arresting your fat ass and we're putting you in jail. That you deserve. Because you're wrecking the planet. You sound like an angry man. <laughs> Except Mobile's good. I mean, I'm good. a little disturbed. How the would anyone being get wrecked. their gas? Well, we'd do electric cars if those people weren't oh, like... Oh, and by the way, what about fresh cars? You have a job to buy the electric car. You need money. <laughs> what, about the, what about the fresh market? They're a mobile... Yeah, we like the fresh market. Yeah, I mean, as far as gas station go, the fresh market in Manchester is probably the best. Yeah, market. go to the fresh market, everybody. It's the best gas station. There in is Manchester. actually a really cool experiment fresh in market. Manchester, the fresh market, uh, fresh, the mobile station fresh, across fresh from the Taco market. House, or what do they call it now, the um, top fresh of the place. Fresh market. Anyway, they um, they're selling some of the best Vermont food. 
it just like and so it's uh, kind of cool like the, the ecological knowledge is invading like the land of gas stations fresh market in the spirit of full disclosure the puppet's bread is sold there Puppet's yeah, the bread. puppet's bread. Who puppet's makes bread. the bread anyways? Uh, Bob. The elf. <laughs> 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 hey, I think um, uh, <laughs> Cornell West is calling us. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was my agent offering me a job. <laughs> On the no climate show, <laughs> so I am sorry they're offering me more money to be a climate denier. I think I'm gonna go work for the bad guys. Bye. All right. Hey, hey. I knew the American Petroleum Institute pays a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Bob will work for money. <laughs> yeah, and so will uh, everyone. everyone. Yeah. Almost everyone. And everyone. All the politicians. They want money. Money, 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 Everybody will sell out to the highest bidder. All you have to do is call your iPhone and say, money, money, money. Okay, okay, I'm coming, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it, okay. I won't. Money. Yeah. Money is no object. I don't think it's an object. I won't. No. won't do anything. Nope. I will only work for free. I will not work for money. I insist on being broke all the time. It's my sort of like... Cross the bear, douchebag, loser, job, being an activist. I'll be broke Party all the time. Party I won't even Party have Party enough Party money Party to buy Party my own Apple wine. <laughs> all right, this show is almost over. Okay. Um, yeah, it's gonna almost over. It's never gonna take you Sorry. off the air. Keep using your potty mouth like that. What potty mouth? Did I yeah. try? I'm sorry. And I you know what? I know what years. They're not gonna offer you a job on the No Climate Change show because you have such a potty mouth, and they only want clean, funny guys and puppets. Will you come with me if we get a professional show? I promise to comb your hair. Like, will I have um, a stunt double? Sure. Well, and you'll be a star. You might get to meet um, some nice people. You and get to be in room. Hollywood. Dressing you'll room. Can I have a date with... Um, you get to hang out with a bunch of neurotic people who like don't aren't sure who they are. You, know you get I to really be like. with Hollywood. Really you get like. to be a um, movie star. How about we just do like 15 minutes of fame? What does that mean? You know, you get your 15 minutes of fame, and then you're like, you're done. You go back to farming. Farming? <laughs> what do you mean, farming? It's um, a lot of work. I'm a full-time celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as you wish. I, uh, you know, Don't want to get your I'm hands dirty Bob. Write your own book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking is that I'd really like a chance to meet someone special. I mean, wouldn't we all? Yeah. Someone really special. Like who? Obama. Michelle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Obama is pretty awesome. Yeah. What about Obama? She's so smart. She knows so much about food. She's, She's like as smart as Michael really Pollan. She's really cool. She's really cool. She We're made so a lucky. garden at the White House. She did. Beautiful garden. And she planted lots of arugula because it's bougie. <laughs> and that's what they like to eat. Arugula is great. Yeah, I love arugula. And she's getting people to, to exercise so good. Kids. Yeah, like she's The Let's good, Move program is really dancer. good. Great dancer. She's got. And Obama's soul. doing good too. We, we give him credit for where credit is due. He's like, he's talking to the Holocaust Museum today, talking about like preventing tragedies by government planning ahead. And even though he's been kind of lame on climate, he's been a pretty good president, I think. So, so look like him yeah. and Romney now, huh? Yeah, Romney, what a dork. <laughs> he's a real loser. He's a one percenter. <laughs> he is loser. the one percenter. He's a tool. I mean, he's, he's the winner in terms of money. He, yeah. won, he won a billion dollars. What a stiff. Do you see him sing? I saw him sing so lousy. And Obama is a great singer. <laughs> I know. We should sing. just sing. Since, like, who? since we've been together, let's <laughs> love in you forever. Whether <laughs> times are good or bad, <laughs> happy <laughs> or sad. <laughs> I, <laughs> Let's stay I'm together. So in love with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Let's Obama stay is a great together. singer. And this is now this is how Romney sings. Uh, America, uh, America, America, God, God and grace on me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Obama. Would you guys trust a president who had never had a beer? 
Um, no way. No, no. I love beer. Yeah, and I spill <laughs> it though. It goes on my fur and I smell like <laughs> trashy. I, hate, I know, I hate when that happens. Um. Yeah. Romney, we can't let Romney win. No, 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 no. We must stop Romney. <sighs> yeah. I thought maybe of an idea. Let's put a whoopee cushion <laughs> under his seat. <laughs> <laughs> good idea? That'd, that'd be funny. Pretty good idea. Did you hear the joke about the a fart? No. Okay, so there's this guy. There's this guy named Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and he's and he's doing a, a fancy show in, in a building. And he's talking and he drops some papers and he turns around to get his microphone. He took take to get his papers, and he farts into the microphone. No, it was Dr. Dr. <laughs> Drodkin who did it, and but and so he moved out because it was so embarrassing. But then, and then one day he came back, and he met a little. He met like someone who was like taking care of that place, and and and. <laughs> And he said, I moved away. Something <laughs> really, and the uh, kid asked him, where are you from? And he said, well, I moved away. This is really my hometown. Something really embarrassing happened to me. And so, and then the kid asked, is, was it before or after the drug can fart? <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> really? Really good story, so <laughs> so, so poignant and, <laughs> and short. Oh. <laughs> Climate show. Uh, Climate show. The Climate show. Climate show. It's a great joke, Kyle. It's the private show. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so funny. It brings tears Everyone to eyes. Everyone watches show. it. It's oh, the okay. private show. The private show. No it's one can watch it because, but everyone watches it because it's the private show. I know it's the private show, like this show, which is private in a way because it's on TV that most people don't have because they don't have cable. You're lucky if you do. Thank you for watching our show, and if you're seeing it on the internet, feel free to like our Facebook page. I think we have one, and uh, you can contact us at theclimateshow at gmail dot com, and um, look for us. Uh, I, uh, we're going to be at Sundance Film Festival next year presenting The Climate Show, Grace Hits Real, Part 44. What's and that um, little typey thing you do? Um, later on, we can add like stuff. Like we'll say, I'll, I'm going to put a funny word right here. Ready? <laughs> Bing! <laughs> I guess we can edit later. Uh, I oh. grabbed the word! Ah, good one. Here's another word. Can you read? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's a complicated language. <laughs> it's a future language. Let me try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I'm do it. Blind. Do another one. I'm blind, you see? I well, can't see you're read. Really blind. I'll stick my fingers in your eyes. <laughs> Wow, this is the best part of the show, guys. <laughs> good work. It's good work. <laughs> one, one extra, one extra little bit. I was talking to a friend of mine in Atlanta a few weeks ago, and um, he's a researcher, chemical engineer. And I'm not sure if this is a, a future possibility or not, but it's an idea. They they are doing something um, to have a basically adsorbent. It's it's a new, well, it's it's not a new concept, but it's a new material that they're working on that they'll put on um, on industrial flues and it'll adsorb, adsorb is, is sort of like what a cigarette filter does. Mm -hmm. It's not absorbent, um, but it, it takes out the carbon through a system. And so you get these materials and you can, you can take the carbon out of a uh, flue and then, well, what they're planning to do is put it in basically a, a shaft, in an oil shaft, in an oil well. So I'm not sure about the the final product, but the, the intermediate. This is um, is yeah. Kind of the it, it's a good cool. idea. Can it's we it. solve this mess through technology? <clears throat> that is question. That is probably a not. Fine question. Not. The um, 
And we technologically it's sort of the holy grail, like, out of this mess. Clean coal, like, will you be able to, like, filter it out? And the problem is, like, once you gather it, what do you do with that? It's actually toxic waste by the time you, like, the, the schmutt out of your stack. is like, Schmutt? Schmutt. Oh. Are you speaking the mother tongue? Schmutt. Yes. Uh, schmutz, I believe, is a Yiddish word meaning stuff. Is that really what it means, huh? I don't know. What does it mean? I You're don't Jewish, think right? so. I think it's something more, Bob? more potty mouth Your Bob, that. uh, Gold Bergenstein? What's your yeah. last name? My name is... My last name is The Slim Puppet. Slim Shady? <laughs> Bob <laughs> The Puppet. Nice. My name is... My name is... Bob M. The Puppet. <laughs> Wait, Bob what? Bob what? Bob The Puppet. Bob... The Muppet. Bob Bob The, the, Bob the Muppet. Muppet. I thought he was French. Bob Le de Maupit. Okay. Um, so, last couple things. Um, you were at Occupy, uh, Occupy Wall Street for two weeks last year. All day, all week. Occupy Wall Street. All Tell us day, about it. all week. Occupy Wall Street. All day, all week. Occupy Wall Street. All day, all week. Occupy Wall Street. So, how was it? Uh, it was all right. There were a lot of problems, but um, the underlying point of it was was very good because it got it got such widespread attention um, that it 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 got to the masses of people who generally aren't thinking about uh, a lot of the issues that were being raised. Whether climate change was def definitely raised, but also a lot of corporate misspending, corporate problems. But um, one of the interesting things I went to was a um, a rally against hydrofracking in the Catskills of New York, and um, so there's a, a big march trying to like gather people to come to this this um, meeting against it, uh, where the community could voice their opinions against the pipeline because mm -hmm. they were going to send a pipeline from Catskills into New York City um, of this natural gas, and it was actually going to go under the what is it? It's going to go under the basically the Hudson River, but on the on the west side of Manhattan, what's that? The Staten Island Lagoon area? I don't know. But it goes under the water and then enters Manhattan uh, on the west side, and it has the capacity to. It would, if it went underway, have the capacity to explode and cause a cata catastrophic explosion yeah. there. But that's, you know, that's the downwind side of it. There's also the problem of completely destroying the Catskills wherever they're doing it. Right, right. I, I hate those fracking frackers. Yeah. yeah, frack them. Frack them. Go frack yourself, you fracking frackers. Frack and frackers. <laughs> yeah. Makes me so mad. Yeah. <laughs> my hair starts getting... Yeah. No, your <laughs> hair is getting all... You blew my top. I mean, fracking should Lost make you upset. Up. Fracking is terrible. They're going to, like, ruin the water supply of the entire country in, like, 10 years for not that much energy. And uh, it's a huge crime against Mother Earth and the people who live here. And so we sh sh fracking needs to be opposed. And um, I just feel like we're up against this incredible thing. Like, the, the corporations are so powerful and they're so self-interested and the government's kind of like asleep at the switch. And, and so many people are so stupid, stupid. <laughs> that they think the corporations are their friends. Right, yes, but really, they want to kill us. The they steal our water. On TV that says I'm your friend. Yeah. And everyone says, "Oh, the corporation is my friend." And then oh, they get a good deal. You I'll get know, a good deal. Yeah, I get a good. What's gonna happen is I'll let them frack on my farm, and then I will get a gift certificate to Home Depot so I can buy a new lawnmower. From dumb, 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 dumb. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> frack you, you fracking fracker. Yeah, frack you. Yeah. So I met a woman Thank whose whose farm in. Um, Texas was they were going to try and do the uh, Keystone XL pipeline right across her land. I hate the Keystone XL pipeline. The Keys extra large, extra stupid XL pipeline, and they extra were there was lousy. extra lousy. The uh, they were they were doing imminent domain. They were like the company was just saying like we must because we are omniscient in the public good corporations going to steal your land and uh, run a pipeline across your farm. Uh, Julia Trigg Crawford is her name. She's from. Um, Our farm is Red Arc, where Red River meets Boat Arc Creek. Pipelines coming across right there in my thumbnails. Oh no! Under my, under my creek. Damn! Age of abominations. Yes. All right, so you have a ranch in. Texas? We have a farm in Northeast Texas, right on the uh, Red River. 
and uh, Keystone XL Pipeline is scheduled to come right across my property. Um, this is a farm that my grandfather bought in 1948. It's about 700 acres, and Keystone wants to come across the corner of it and uh, uh, go go bore under the water where I have my water rights, um, and then uh, and then go through a pasture where there are documented Caddo Indian artifacts. So they they condemned it. Uh, didn't, I was part of no process that I was supposed to, I was supposed to have been able to pick people as part of the special commission. I was not. Um, but right now we're in the eminent domain process. One of our concerns is water. They're horizontally drilling under the water source I irrigate 400 acres from, and should there be any any leak there, it will contaminate all of my water, and I won't be able to irrigate my crops. So it's not a good deal. Not a good deal. And so eminent domain, a Canadian company is coming to the U.S. and saying what? That they have a right through, because they call themselves a common carrier, they can just check off a box in the permitting process that they're a common carrier, and that by saying they're a common carrier, that, that what they're hauling or what they're going to do is for the, for the common good. And this is a Canadian company condemning the land of an American citizen for a greedy for-profit enterprise, and I don't buy it. Terrible. And I got arrested here on August the 31st in front of the White House protesting it. If I get arrested again today, I will but I'm just honored to be here with 6,000 other comrades, many of whom don't even have land affected by it. That's what, I'm just totally humbled by that. I have land, I have skin in the game, it's my land. I'm, I'm fighting for the bigger picture, but to, to, to be involved in this with other people who want to help me with my property is unbelievable. Thank you. Can you say your name? My name is Julia Trigg Crawford. I live in direct Texas in Lamar County, Texas. Obama actually approved the leg of the Keystone XL from inside the U.S., although not the cross-border part. And apparently, he 69. He, he could he could part well. The the part inside the America might have been more difficult. He did kind of cave on that one. And um, but 69 Congress, 69 Democrats voted for the Keystone XL recently in this vote in Congress. So it's even though it feels like a done deal to us, and we're all into it. It's like you know these. I just feel like we're at a place of a very, like almost like a schizophrenic society. Like the reality is climate change, and then you have this like massive delusional population, including like U.S. senators, like seemingly some people you think would be the smartest people in our yeah, society, they and they're total to them, out of touch. To vote for them, so, yeah, but th that if the planet is really on the line, and yeah, we're going to wreck it in the, the, the next ten years, they all they want to do is take away <laughs> guns and religion. Take away the guns and religion. And they want to spend all the money that taxpayers pay, and they want to make a bureaucratic nightmare so that you can't pollute. No fair. Sp <laughs> sounds like a completely uh, illogical yeah, Tea Party gibberish. Well, yeah, that's what the Tea Party gibberish is. We <laughs> want to keep our guns and our religion and our rights to let the corporations do whatever they want to us. Uh, well, that sounds like a terrible idea, and I'm, I'm for the opposite. I think we should uh, make the corporations behave as if they were... You know, if they're going to have the rights as people, we should be able to put them in jail, make them go out of business. Exxon Mobil, we invite you to go out of business. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your oil. And now, no more well, fracking. I'll just fill one more tank. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't have an electric car yet. But uh, I'm willing, if Al Gore wants to sponsor this show, or uh, Bill Mayer and his production team, or Rachel Maddow's team, uh, we need uh, the climate show to go professional. Or Fozzie Bear. Or Fozzie Bear. <laughs> or we're willing to work with the Muppets. Uh, hopefully, would rather not? hey Bob, <laughs> if we got a professional <laughs> show and there were other Muppets, would you be cool? If we had other Muppets. What do you mean I'm not cool now? No, no, no I mean, no. would you be cool if like <laughs> you weren't the only Muppet on the climate show? Oh yeah, I love Muppets. I want other Muppets, especially girl Muppets. That would be fun. Yeah, but they don't have nipples. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Neither do you. So what are you complaining about? I know, but the girl, the girl Muppets should have nipples. You'd think. Yeah, I think. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll set that intention for the future. <laughs> All we can use is like some stickers or some stickers or uh, duct tape or, <laughs> or duct like tape. those round band aids. You know those ones? <laughs> yeah, I do. They're not yeah, good for anything else except making nipples <laughs> 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 for the girl. <laughs> those round ones for anyway. Round cuts. <laughs> I mean, occasionally you get a good round Puncture cut. Puncture wounds. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Is mm. it when you cut a giant hole in the in the middle of your hand? Must be for that. <laughs> One, one possible option. Cut out the middle. I like to use it to to bring the attention to my third eye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
In the, yeah. <clears throat> in the sacred yeah. Hindu ar uh, arcana of the, the physicality, they say the, uh, one of the seats of enlightenment is right here, <laughs> in the third eye, also in your heart. Which is right here. Bob, can I feel topic. your heartbeat? <laughs> <laughs> He's a very strong heart. He's a very big heart, Bob. <laughs> Climate show makes my heart go. Bada boom, bada boom. <laughs> Can you sing one goodbye song? What song should we sing in a goodbye song? Climate show! Climate show! The climate See you guys show! Later. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank I you. love you. Love you. Thank you, I Gina. You. I love you, Michelle Obama. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Nice garden. <laughs> Thanks to Sarah and uh, Phoebe and the production assistants and Elliot Long and the staff at Jeanette. We're out of here. Thanks, guys. Thanks to our guru, Theo. Thank you. Guru. Yeah. Goofy guru. Oh, I'm all wet. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, guys. Well done. <laughs> da, da, da. Time to start drinking. <laughs> So I think we're doing good. We're off to a good start. Feel pretty strong. Let's see what these talk about. As confident as a good Christian holding four aces. <laughs>